All right, everybody. Kathy Arbor here, and today we are going to do this cute little um, grumpy birds, I call them. <laughs> and I do have, if you go on my channel page, Kathy Arbor, and go into the community tab, there is a down downloadable link there to uh, Google Drive, and you can download this for free and paint along. This is um, actually from The Little Footprints Volume 5 by Carol Forsyth. And um, it's actually for acrylic painting, but there's no reason why you can't use it for any kind of medium, really. So, uh, let's see. Just going to bring you over a little bit. So you can see my picture. That's better. Hey, Linda, Janet, how are you? Uh, I might just tip this around. I'm in my other, I have a spare bedroom that was my office so I thought I may as well make it into my upstairs studio why not have two studios <laughs> this one's got a drafting table so it's on a bit of a an angle so it's great for um, drawing and any kind of uh, watercolor so I don't know if anyone saw the, I did post this uh, yesterday um, to download this little drawing here. And um, if you didn't get it, just go to the community tab and you can download that. And I've already uh, taken some, this is the Sorel graphite paper so it's actual graphite and it doesn't have any kind of um, wax on it so it's easy to erase if you want to erase any of it or even lighten it because I know a lot of people like to lighten their um, watercolor uh, drawings so you don't see it as as much now this one's going to be a little bit darker than um, what you like color wise I mean I'm going to be using some um, browns and grays blacks that type of thing to do the bird they're going to be little chickadees I'll definitely be downloading it later great project for tomorrow awesome Janet hey Christine good to see you So what I'm going to do is uh, I've just got this eraser here, a kneadable eraser, and I'm just pulling it to clean it. So all you do is you kind of squish it around, turn it. This is an old one, so it's starting to be a little bit harder to pull apart and stuff. But that's all you have to do with these. So before I start doing this, I'm just going to erase any marks I might have on it that I don't want to show through. Because the one thing about watercolor when you're drawing a, from the graphite paper or a pencil, is once you put down your watercolor, you cannot get it back up. Very hard. 
some people say you can a little bit, but I've never had great luck at it. It's more or less um, taken up the paint. And you don't want the paint any lighter than you've already put it down. Um, I suppose it might be a good thing to think about if you want your paint color a little bit lighter. But I always like to just, um, I just lightly skim it over the drawing that it's on the, the watercolor paper. And that way it doesn't shine through the watercolor as much. I think you guys can still see it. I can always leave this here if you want to see the reference. Uh, is there anywhere else to get the download? I don't have access to community tab. Yeah, it's, it's the public. You have access. Go in my channel page and it says community. Press on that and you'll see it because it's for the public. The community tab's just not for members. It's, it, you can also find anything that I put in for the public to see. Delbert. So try that. And uh, you should be able to get in there because it is for the public. But you have to go on my channel. Not um, You won't see it just on a video. You have to actually go into the channel. Where did I put my... Okay. Well, let's... Oh, there they are. Uh, no community tab on device. Only desktop. Oh, okay. Um... Just hold on a minute. I'll see if I can get, or actually, um, Janet, can you go into my community tab and get that link and put it on the chat for me? And that would be great. Yeah, that's the only thing with devices. You don't get to see a lot of the, like I know a lot of people that are on um, Apple products, they can't see the join button either. So you kind of have to click on the uh, link that's in the description for that. So if you're thinking of joining, there's three levels. And the first level, you get all the downloadables that are um, out there for any of the paintings that I've done for the public. And then um, the next two levels up are um, downloadables plus the step-by-step -step video. Um, for the second level and a uh, live for the third level. Thanks, Janet. You're awesome. All right, so this little guy or girl, whatever, pair. <laughs> We're just going to do some very light uh, washes on it, uh, some wet into wet, and then actually some 
Um, let's see, I think I need to go over a little bit more. There. And then some more detailed. So we're going to start off with the little chest area. And I'm just going to be wetting that area. And this is 140 pound uh, Strathmore watercolor paper. Now you just wet the areas that you want the paint to run. So I'm making sure not to get into the darker areas. Uh, which is around the mouth and the eye. Just, just do the chest area first. And I'm just dabbing along the edge here because that way it will be a little bit more um, uh, ragged looking. And these, are got, these guys are really fluffy. So make sure you have a fair amount of water. And... You just tilt your page so that you can see the shine on it. If you hear my dogs, they're in the room with me. That's probably Chloe rubbing her ears. <laughs> um, and what I'm going to be doing, is their chest area is kind of a grayish color. But I'm going to use this. I already have some blue um, I already have some bluish color here and I've just put a bunch of water on my brush and I'm just mixing that up. So I'm just gonna it's more or less dirty color from a past painting. And all I'm gonna do is around the outer edge just dot. And let it run to wherever your water line is. And under the beak is also a little bit darker. And just let it do its thing. And then just add a few dots in the center. Not a lot. And I'm going to... When you're doing the ones next to it, you can't go to the edge of that wet area that you just did because it'll seep into there. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm not going to put the water right next to that wet edge. Now, you can also just wait for that to dry if you want or take a heat gun. I've got my heat gun set up here so I'm just going to let it dry and I'm just going to wet this area and making sure I don't go into that beak and we'll just make sure it's kind of um, jagged looking I guess you could say so those are the little feathers and I'm going to pick up some more of that and I'm just going around the edge. Now, my desk, my um, draft desk is on a 30% mm, tilt, I guess, roughly. So you're seeing more color pool at the bottom. And that's okay for this one because the bottom of their tummy is usually darker anyways. It gets wet and dirty and whatever. And I'm just going to let that dry. Now, another way of um, accomplishing this type kind of modeled look would be to add some rock salt on to, onto this. Uh, not right away, though. Let it seep into the paper slightly. And you don't want a real shine on it when you put rock salt on it. You don't want a lot of wetness. You want it just to be a low luster and then put the salt on it. You'll get a lot more 
of a effect when you let it dry just a, just a tad but don't let it dry too much because then you won't get anything it's kind of a goldilocks thing <laughs> okay so let's uh go up here actually I'll, I'll show you this this is where i got it from so i'm making mine a little bit different this is uh, an acrylic painting so we have black here, and then we have black underneath, and then there's two white stripes on their cheeks. So this top part will also be dark. So we're gonna just, and I'm gonna let it put some crazy, hair or feathers <laughs> on this guy and I'm going around the eye and around the beak top of the beak there so I want it all nice and wet if you get too wet just dry your brush and then just dab it away or We'll just put it over here a little bit. Make sure it's still good and wet, but you don't want pools. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing and put just dabbing. Might need a little more on my brush, so. So this is just the leftovers from a painting that I did. So around the edges of where I put this water. And maybe around the eye, I want it a little bit more concentrated. And not too worried about if it gets uh, crazy on the top because they have really fuzzy tops. And we can now also add some pen to this too. If, if you find you, you need it a little bit more uh, defined, I'm going to put the other one on his head now and so I got some water and I'm just dabbing again so it's a rough outer edge and then around his beak and then just fill in the center with the water so we got a good amount of water on there and then take my And do the same thing. Just dab. Now this method of just dabbing on a wet area is done a lot with florals and animal watercolors. Hey Ange, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so I'm just going to let that guy dry up a little bit. And then what I could probably do is some of these leaves or flowers I could probably paint. And this one, I think I'm going to have it um, kind of. I think apple blossoms or cherry blossoms. So they're going to be more or less white, but just a blush of pink in it. So I'm doing the same thing. And this time I'm going to get uh, some of this the crimson red. 
a little bit of, I'm just kind of using up my leftovers, really. And I'm just going to do the same thing, but I'm going to just dab on the edges this time. So I don't necessarily need a lot. And then just take your brush, dry it, take the paint out of it, and then just lift as it's as it's moving some of that paint with your brush. So you just wipe it, dry it off, get a clean brush, make sure it's nice and clean. You don't want any more paint in there. And lift the paint. So I've got just a Kleenex here tissue and I'm just lifting this paint and adding a little bit of highlight to the edge or the uh, center part here I'm good really good I just wanted to drop in to say hi and see how well you were Yeah, you got to do what you have to do, Ange. I know social media can be pretty harsh. But I'm glad you popped in just to say hi, and I wish you the best. Okay, so there's the little flower so I think I'll probably do most of them so I'm gonna wet them again so there's a little bud here with that's kind of hanging down so you're seeing the back side of it more or less so let's put some on that and I'm just dabbing the very edges so go ahead and do all of your petals of the flowers you can do them whatever color you want you don't have to do them what i'm doing them in the reddish pink do them whatever you want Awesome. That's great, Ange. So glad you found finally found a place that you like and benefits to boot. That's great. I think there's only like three. How many is there? One, two, three. Yeah, there's only four of them, so you're on lunch right now. Well, thanks for popping in. This is such a, a quick and easy way of doing stuff. Now we can do the, the same thing with the 
um, leaves. Um, I got a nice dark green here. Uh, Kathy, do those brushes annoy you with the way they don't snap back too straight? No, um, that only happens when they're most of the water is out of them. Um, it doesn't really bother me because most of the time I have quite a bit of paint in them or water, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, if you like, some people like a real spring. Um, if you, if that's the case, then I would suggest getting uh, a synthetic because they have a lot more spring in their brushes. The only, you know what, there's, there's so many um, synthetic brushes nowadays that are so great. I would probably uh, invest in them myself. A lot of uh, watercolor artists just use the plain old synthetic ones that um, people that use them for uh, acrylics. So it's really up to you. Depends on your, your way of, of uh, watercoloring. If you're more of a wet into dry, you might want to invest in more of, of a spring type of watercolor brush. I do a lot of um, wet into wet, so I don't mind it. darker under here. There's the little potty in the branch. Now you could use a smaller brush if you find it difficult to use these big ones. And mix up the greens a little bit. You don't have to stick to one color. Maybe this has got some brighter areas or here's one, the one on the top here actually has a fold over. So I'm just going to paint that a little bit darker. And then maybe this, the, uh, whatever the, the back part of the flower bud here has a little bit of green on it. And maybe this one. You can always go back. If you put on a fairly light coat, you can always go back and add another layer on top of it. That's the nice thing about using the watercolor is you start off light. And then change it up as you go. You could add more brown to it and just add shadows or um, make holes in the leaves. Maybe the bugs have been eating the flowers. Depends how precise you want it. Whenever you see a pattern or picture that you're you're getting a reference from, 
you don't have to stick to that pattern you can always make it a little bit different than what they have by adding something to it that's what i like to do just add a little bit of something to it so it's not the same as the pattern so either put some bugs in on it or different colors take a bird out just do one bird Let's see what's that okay a little you not um uh, well it's not for you right now I haven't had the energy time or even the want honestly I really think it's the lack of space that is keeping me from wanting to do it it's hard to get motivated into it. yes i can i can understand that okay so let's see how this little guy is doing now i think what i'm going to do is still a little bit wet so i'm going to probably do a little bit of umber here so i've got some a little bit of umber mixed with a little bit of green that I have on my plate. And I'm just going to, I'm going to dry brush this one in. Maybe mix a little bit of brown with that. And I'm just going to dry brush with the tip of my brush. That's the nice thing I like about these brushes is the small, narrow tip. So when you're dry brushing you could just put a line and then instead of having a hard line on the bottom you can just take a wet brush and just wash it out a bit that way you're you're getting a, a variant of tone down and around the breath the um little branch now I can take some darker color let's see a little umber and I'm just going to go along the bottom here my paper is still a little bit wet from where I took that down and I'm just going to see if that takes it up into the branch and go around the toes now, I don't want to get too close to let's see what that is it's a little lump branch lump <laughs> don't want to get too close to the fur or not fur I calling it fur the feathers because I don't want that brown bleeding into that area. So I'm just going to stop there for now. So you have to be careful not to go in wet areas because you'll get blooms. You know, and if you remember what a bloom was, it looks like a cauliflower in a way. And we don't want those right now. So I'm just going to see that goes down and around like that and I just get my brush and then I just wash it out making sure not to go too high there's my little feet now I might want a little bit darker along there so I'm just going to dab in around the feet so it's a little bit darker. 
And then a little more in here on the bottom. Now this is a fairly uh, thick coat of paint. It's not really watered down. And that's so I can take the pigment up with the wet brush. Into the top of the branch. That one seems to be a little bit light, so I'm going to just throw a little bit more under there. And around his little knuckles. Oh, thanks, Ange. Miss seeing you ages since we Oh, Janet, yes, thanks. Escape last night, confusing day. Thank you. Well, that's good, Dot. If you're home, you'll feel much better now that you're home. So see, I'm just um, wetting and moving that top color. Maybe I'll put some in here, a little bit of that greenish brown. And then just in the top parts. This is still wet, so I have to be very careful. And I'm going to water that down. Just a bit. It's almost dry. Let's see. Yeah, see how the... Uh, the concentrate of the pigment is down there, so it kind of gave it its own shadow, which is cool. Take care, Dot. So glad you're feeling better. Just rest up and don't try and do too much. All right, so I'm going to take some altering blue. I want to make a fairly dark gray, not quite black, but fairly dark gray, I guess. So you just have to take some ultramarine blue and some sienna or burnt umber will do and it'll give you a nice dark color and I'm going to put their little feet in they're just a nice dark color so their little toes And we can actually go back in with um, pen and put in the little lines 
little feathers, strokes, that type of thing. Now, if you if you want to be just a purist in watercolor, you don't have to do that. You can do it all in watercolor, but I like pen work in watercolor myself. So that's what I'm going to do, but I'll leave it up to you. You can do whatever you want. No, I see there's a little bit of Just going to add a little bit there. Darken it in here because it would be darker. And a little more gold in there. I'm just going to go into the fur now. Just some streaks. Of uh, it's a uh, ochre color with a little bit of brown in it, and I'm just making little lines going into the body of the bird. Just on the bottom. would be a little bit of a shadow so you can add a little bit of um, ultramarine blue to that mix just to darken it a little bit just dab a few along that edge just a few keep it you see it okay Is that his foot? Oh, yes, I missed a foot. Let's put his foot back in. Oh, there it is. I must have missed a toe. All right, so while that's drying, I think we can probably go into this area here, which is the top part of his wing. And it's going to be kind of a darker, more into the, the gray side. So I want you to get some more ultramarine blue and some umber, burnt umber. And we'll make a nice dark color. It's almost black, but it's not. It's a little bit on the blue side, but it's a really nice color. Most birds are this kind of brownish black color. And then we're going to... Just, uh, let's see, just looking, this guy, just make a little few um, strokes, tiny strokes, so you have to be a little careful on you don't want them really thick. Just go towards the beak, like so, and I'm just going to put a few down here around the beak area and the eye. Darken that area up a little bit.
and under his beak, just a few, not a lot, uh, just a few dark areas right under the beak. And then right around the top part of his head where we put all those other colors, I want you to go very lightly and make some strokes going outwards just along the top part of his head. You can make some curved. You can have some wonky feathers. And then just curve some around the outer edge where they meet. Same with this part, very lightly. Now you could use a pen if you don't want to do it this way, but it's good practice. And then Rinse some clean water, and then just around here, I want you to wet that area up again. Just around the, the eye area. Take that dark color. And then I'm just going to drop some dark bits in there just to darken that up again. Let it flow together. Make sure you have enough water on there. Add some just to make it flow a little bit more. So it kind of gives you a bit of a dimension. Now I'm going to wipe off my brush and, and just very lightly in the top part where the head is, I'm just going to wipe an area. Okay, so now I'm going to, around the outer edge of his belly, just go around that area now with some clean water. And then take some of that umber color. Or no, sorry. The uh, ochre or sienna would work too. And add some of that to the, just the very outer edge, because they do have a little bit of um, kind of a brownish color on them, just like that. You can take a clean brush if you find that you've got a line, just take that out a little bit. Soften it and wipe away in the center. And I got to finish that part. So that was that dark color of the umber and the blue. And just add a few more specks. These look 
I'm pretty good. So I want you to do the same thing over here on that bird. So the umber and the brown or umber or ultramarine blue. So whatever blue or brown you have will work. You just have to play with it a little bit. So I'm just making some little tufts of fur. Around the outer edge. It's just a cute little watercolor drawing for your journal or for a card. It'd be cute as a card. And then just around the eye, I want a little bit more. And remember, there's that little white patch. That's um, by his eye. Don't cover that up. this area with my brush and just dab some in. Coco, stop. Make sure there's a good amount. I think it goes down into his, just under his eye, that dark color. Like that. Make sure there's a good amount. Okay, and then his little wing area, I'm just dabbing. And then I'm just wetting this belly area again. Sienna or ochre color in. Just dab around the other edge. Let it bleed in. Now this little area here where his, um, the little white mark, you can put a little bit of that gray um, formula in just, I want it fairly light. So really water it down. And you can put it in both areas. Just a bit, a few dots, and then take your brush and, and take all, all of that water out of it and just move it around slightly. You still want it mottled looking, but not as white white because they're it's not a real white. And then they have a little bit of 
that sienna color just at the back there and put that in i don't know whether that's true or not but it's gonna it's a make-believe bird just take some water and fade it out you can take some off if you want So just lift some areas with your brush. Now their eye let's see I think I'm going to make this a little darker here. So I think that needs to have some more of that sienna color in here. So I'm going to just, they're kind of together right there. I'll just add a little okay. bit right around the very, darken that sienna color up a little bit. And then take your brush, just bring it out. I just want it just a little bit darker there. That looks good. All right. I see a little bit. I missed some little areas here where his um, the white part was. So I'm just going to put that there. Now we need to do the eyes. The eyes are really dark. So you want to make another, if you haven't got any more left, make some more of that dark gray with your ultramarine blue and your umber. And then at the tip of your brush, just go in around the center. Leave a little bit of a white line around the outer edge of the eye. If you can. It's tricky. But just a bit. They do have this little bit of a, I guess, eyelid. That part is white. This part needs to be just a little bit filled in there. Okay. Now we need to do his beak, and his beak can be, uh, I have Indian yellow here, and I'm going to have a fairly full strength, and just out, well, it's very small, so, but it goes around kind of has a wonky Crooked <laughs> little beak.
Now we'll just take some pen or colored pencil, whatever you want, and make the line showing the difference. All right, so now we could probably put some more color in the leaves. So actually, let's see if we can take some out. So this one up here is a little bit dark. So right on the top, I'm just going to wet it and then take a cloth and just dab it. Let's see what you can get off. So I have a little bit of a highlight there, so I'm just Scrubbing it a little bit. Take some off. Um, right here, where the fold is, I'm going to take some of that off. Now, every paint is different, so some you may not be able to. Let's see. Let's put some areas might want you want you might want a little bit darker. So I've got some uh, hookers green here. Mix it with a little bit of that ultramarine blue. That gives me a little bit of a different. I'm gonna put just a bit along the bottom here. Maybe the stems. This one might be a little bit darker under the you can put shadows in, you could put veins in. I'm just going to put some veins in. See, this needs to be a little bit darker, maybe. Show that it's folded over. Kind of looks like a tattered leaf, actually. I don't know how I did that, but <laughs> thanks, Dot. And always walk out your hard edges. It's they look a lot nicer if you don't have a hard edge on certain areas. So try and do that. It's it's good practice. You can do it, Elaine. Just play with it. Don't get too serious with it. Just have fun. Maybe a little bit of a line in there. it a little more maybe um, let's bring this out a little bit walk it out shadowed area I can Maybe some red. Maybe you need a little bit more areas in the petals that might be a little more red. Maybe in the top parts. 
along the edge. Just play with it. See what looks good for you. You never know until you try. Walk it out a little bit. And maybe we're going to take a pen and do a little bit of sketching on it just to show you what else you can do with it. So you can just watch or you can try it. It's up to you. I think we need centers in here. So I'm going to take some of this. Um, Indian yellow that I used for the beak. Just dot a few dots in the center of the flowers. Just a few. And this needs a little, little, little bit of darkening in there. It would be dark underneath him. Remember, he's got fuzzy little feathers, so you want to make sure that when you, if you add more to it, don't forget those fuzzy marks along the bottom. Go lay down. Oh. Okay, that's looking good all right so let's um let that dry a bit I think what we can do is uh, use some pen now I have now you can either use graphic or You want something that's uh, waterproof is my go-to, but if you don't have that, then you can still use pen on it as long as you're not going to add anything on after. So if you're not, if you're finished with the painting, go ahead and use a regular pen. I like using a fairly, uh, let's see fine pen if I can find it there it is these are the uh, pilot G tech C4 I don't know if you can see that I got a real leg You gotta make sure that this is dry though. Hey Tori. That's okay, Tori. Don't forget to uh, actually um, there is a link in the community tab on my channel page, or if you can scroll back, um, Janet put in a link to it that you can download. Yeah, he's barely, barely, I think, let's see if I can plug in my hair dryer. Watch out, Chloe. You're right underneath my feet. Oh, 
dry this. So this is just the black one. It's uh, very fine. I don't, I'm not sure how fine they are, but had painty hands. Couldn't. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I can hardly wait to do this tomorrow, Kathy. It's so thank you. Yeah, it isn't it cute? So let's see. A little. Little uh, mouth is cute. They're such grumpy look they look like real grumpy little birds. <laughs> and then you can also just do little flicks if you want to make them fuzzy. Add more little finer ones. Oh. And just take it down into the that white area. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. Ooh. Flicks of uh, black in the, underneath the chin of this one. Just around his eye. I just do a little bit darker on the bottom part of the eye with the pen just to shadow it a little bit and then a little dot in the center. Just it kind of gives him a little latitude. Not like he needs a whole lot. <laughs> He's cute. You just flick along the edge. Now his toes, we can do separating the toes a little bit. And you can put little nails on them if you want. You can 
put little um, creases in them. I think they're cute. And then you could, you could also take a white pen and do highlights, which is cute. I think I got one up here that I can show you. That. But just the little bits of um, pen mark adds to these guys, I think. You could leave them without, but and I like the really fine um, tipped pens. So try and find ones that are fairly fine. Just to, I'm going to bring it in just a bit there, a little more, a little more concentrated. Can add a few flicks down in the, where is, Make sure you follow the lines that the fur or the, the keep calling it fur. The feathers would be going in. Okay, I gotta put in a little bit of, of that dark color underneath this guy. I forgot. his beak here. Mm. Down his chest just a tad. Need a little more blue in there. Walk it out a little bit. Take some out this little bit here. Hey, Michelle, <laughs> thank you. So we can just, just laugh, add some more flicks and squirrely hair. <laughs> or not hair, feathers. I don't know what it is. Put a few marks there. 
and then some more along the side here. Keeping in mind which way the feathers would be going. So we could have quite a few on it. The bottom here. Wait till that's dry. We can go back in. Um, then that center, there's a little. We have a little center line where the breastbone is that kind of comes apart when they perch. You can do that. A few odds and odds here. Um, now his little beak, let's see, just outline it, goes down and goes like that, and then down again. And kind of rounded. Oh, uh, little guys. Okay, so there. Now with the flowers, you could either just leave them as is or just put a few shadowed areas. I'm just going to go underneath this branch here and kind of do a sketchy and then thinking of the shape that the limb is in it's round so let's make a few marks and a few in the top here just here and there not a lot just to give it a little more definition kind of um, cross hatching It'd be fairly dark underneath there. Oh. Chloe, no. I'm just going to put a few dots or squiggly jagged marks in too, just to show that it's bark. You can see it. Now with the, the, um, leaves I can just do one side or not the whole like don't outline everything because it just doesn't look right 
Just do one side of the leaf maybe. It just adds a little bit more definition, a little more um, shading. Don't need a lot though. So I'm just thinking of if the sun was out, where would the shadow be? So I'm just putting a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit in certain areas. Don't want to put too much on the flowers because of the light color. So wherever you think there might be a little bit of a shadowed area, you can put just a, just a bit to show that, not a lot. I find when you put too much, it kind of destroys the softness of the watercolor. Let's see. So here I'm going to put just a few on the maybe a curves. This was the Chloe's upset that I'm in here. She's not being snuggled. How dare you guys intrude? There. Hopefully I got that. So you just need a just a bit. Just a little bit. So it's up to you how much you want to put in. Now, with the highlight, if you have a pen, would be the fast. You don't need an acrylic um, pencil. Let's see if I got one in here. And I have a don't see, I have a colored pencil, but I don't think I have my other pen. Oh, damn it. Yes. Okay, I have these uh, Signal. They're great. Let's see. And then I would just put a little bit on the tops of the feet down the center. So... Just a bit, not a, lot, not a lot. Just where the tops of their feet would be showing. And a little dot in their eye, of course. And then just on the top part of their beak. This one's not working the right best. There. Not liking this. Might have to use the pencil. For some reason, it's not liking my paper. No, that's not going to work either. Hmm. Thank you. 
think so. Uh, right there. A little bit less. Maybe right there. I'm just going to put a little around his eye there. And I think that is it. So there's the little guy. It's all done. So I hope you give this a try. It's very easy to do. There's many ways of going about doing it. So give it a try and print it out as many times as you want and uh, use it as a card or part of your journal or you could even frame them. So I hope you enjoyed and uh, show your work on Instagram. Just tag me. I'd love to see what you did and get creative. Enjoy the time we have at home by being creative. Why not? So I'll let you guys go and you have a fantastic day and we'll see you on Thursday for our paint along. I'm not sure what we're doing yet. I've yet to figure that one out, but uh, we'll see you on Thursday, same time, one o'clock Eastern. And until then, have a fantastic day, everyone. We'll see you later.